I, I saw, when I was in Kenya, with the four of our leaders, I kept on seeing a vision. It's a disturbing vision. This vision, it was a vision of um, a giant evil spirit seated on a throne, on a throne, a demonic throne, a giant evil spirit. It was like a, it had a body like a person, a human being. But the head was a big head of a snake. And this demon was writing. It was writing scrolls, scrolls, and then throwing them into the air. So I couldn't understand why I was seeing that in mid-air. So <clears throat> this giant evil spirit was writing on a tap in mid-air, in mid-heaven writing scrolls and throwing them into the air. And then I saw six preachers, six preachers, three from this country and three from elsewhere. I don't know where three they were coming from. They appeared before the throne of this giant evil spirit. And then they were carrying the umpire poles. They lifted the umpire poles into the air and started to tear patches from the umpire poles the tear patches, and then in the place of those patches, they were putting these scrolls, I mean, which were thrown by the evil spirit. It's a spirit of deception. So, we must pray, my brothers and sisters, because there is an evil spirit which has been tasked by Satan to cause pastors in the name of revelation to clearly contradict and revise the Bible. To clearly what? Contradict. To read the scripture. And the pastors, because of what they believe is their elevated revelation or enlightenment, spiritual, to begin to oppose what is clearly said in scripture. I'm not talking about opposing in a subtle way. To openly oppose the scripture. You are going to witness it in this season. And there are three preachers who are especially threatened here in Zimbabwe by that evil spirit. Three preachers. So God sent me with a warning that if you are following us pastors, you must reason from the Holy Scriptures. Don't generalize from miracles and other things that pastors are doing, that someone is sent of God. Let me assist you. <clears throat> anyone, and I mean anyone, can be deceived by Satan. I didn't say anyone will be deceived by Satan. I said anyone can be deceived by Satan. That's why Jesus Christ said we must be vigilant. He said watch and pray. For you do not know the hour of your want of your redemption. So there are three preachers who are very influential in this country. One of them has got a very large following. One of them has got a very large following. I've to talked about him in the past. One of them. With his younger brother, I've talked about them in the past. They keep on entering this funny realm of revelation. Very soon, this evil spirit will be throwing scrolls on them. It will sound like genuine revelation from the Spirit of God. But when you go to the Word of God, the Logos, which does not change, you will see that everything which they are saying is directly contradicting Scripture. And in some instances, these preachers that have been overtaken by this demonic spirit, this demonic principality, they will say, the, the, this verse is saying this, and I'm saying this. You can close the door. This verse is saying this, and I am saying this. They directly contradict what scripture is saying. Those who are brainwashed in those ministries, they will just receive from lead what those preachers will be saying, but they will be led astray. 
Because we are in a season of separation. Hallelujah. It's a season of trial. It's a season of separation. It's a season when we are all of us preachers, we are being sifted. Everything and everyone who is called a preacher, especially in Zimbabwe, South Africa, Kenya, Zambia, and Tanzania, a lot of preachers are being sifted. We are being sensed by the Spirit of God. So the key to, uh, to avoiding falling in this season of sifting, this season of trying, this season of testing, is to remain in the Word is to remain in the word. Don't be suspended in the air all the time because you can be deceived. After you are in the spirit, you must also be in the what? In the word. After you are in the spirit, you must also be in the what? In the word. So, there are very powerful, very wealthy, very influential, very charismatic preachers we are just about to introduce a lot of nonsense into the body of Christ. Very strange doctrines. Extremely strange doctrines. You will ask yourself, even if you didn't go to Bible school, how does a pastor read this verse and come up with such a strange explanation? With such a strange doctrine. And uh, their explanations won't be ordinary explanations. It's like they'll be introducing new doctrines, new teachings. And that these new teachings, they will pollute the consecration of their members. And some of their members will leave because they will realize that something is afoot to you, which is not of God. And when they discern by the Holy Spirit that something is afoot, which is not of God, they will leave those churches. Hallelujah. But the majority of the people in those ministries, they will not leave because they are already brainwashed. If you are a preacher, let me give you advice. <clears throat> Don't brainwash people. Don't brainwash people. Preachers, they know what I mean. If you are not a preacher, you may not understand why I'm saying that. And you may not understand what the instruction means. Leave the thing that we preachers must not interfere with. In each and every person who is in our ministry is the will of a person. Don't interfere with the will. Because preachers, they've got the, the, they've got the advantage of the pulpit. You can repeat certain things until you override the, uh, the will of the people who are following you. There are many preachers who are like that. Do you think in a church in South Africa where people were eating grass, they were still reasoning? If I say go and eat leaves and grass, will you uh, obey that instruction? You want to obey that instruction because your will is still intact. But if, if, you end up, if I get tempted and at the instigation of evil spirits, I start to manipulate your will such that you can no longer decide for yourself. Everything it has to be the man or the woman of God. Churches like that are very dangerous. In a church, people must be left to reason on their own. The will is a precious and a dangerous gift. Did you hear what I said? The will is a precious and a dangerous gift. Why am I saying it's a precious gift? The will is the gift that God gave you, which gives you self-consciousness. That gives you the ability to say, I am sorry and so. It's the will. And it also gives you the ability to make your own decisions. You are basically free because of your will. And you are capable of self-determination because of your will. If you surrender that organ of your soul, which is called the will, Anyone can do anything. They can rape you. When you know that the Bible says, don't fornicate. They can make you drink alcohol. They can make you drink petrol. Like you see it on YouTube. Those people, they are human beings like you, but they have surrendered to this precious thing, which is called the what? The will. Now, when you look at God, you realize that there is only one thing which it does not control in your life. 
And this thing which God does not control in your life is your will. And your will is so strong and so sacred, precious, in the sight of God that in his infinite wisdom, he has decided to punish you for using your will in a wrong way rather than to force your will. Your will is something which God will not touch. God can touch your physical body if you need healing or strength. God can touch your spirit. When you are saved, your spirit is touched in a split second. You are a new creation according to 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. But your will, which is your soul, which is a, a major component in your soul, it takes edges and edges and edges and edges for it to be transformed because it is within your power to surrender your will to his will. To surrender your will to his what? To his will. But in the churches that I'm talking about, where the evil spirit is writing scrolls to drop to the pastors, to the minds of the pastors, as they are meditating in the prayer closet, the first thing that the pastor will confiscate from the church members is the will. Have a tata one one. Confiscate the will. Those who will refuse with their will, they are the ones who will survive. Those who surrender their will, they will defend the indefensible. So we are living in a very dangerous season of deception. We are just about to see strange things in the body of Christ. Three of the preachers are outside. And the Holy Spirit was telling me this morning they will multiply. Because these six preachers that I'm talking about, they've got preachers who are their followers. So when they hear that the man of God has released a revelation, they will then transmit that revelation without, first of all, evaluating it in the light of the Holy Spirit. And before you know it, we will have a cancer of deception all over the place. So the Holy Spirit sent me with a warning that each and every one of us, we must read the word of God. We must allow a sufficient deposit of the word of God so that we don't fall into deception. Because these people will remain with their charisma, they will remain with their ability to prophesy, they will remain with their ability to perform miracles. That's the thing which will cause a lot of people to stumble. Because their spiritual gifts will not be taken away. God will be testing whether we honor his word more than anything else. Or we honor other things at the expense of his word. That's what will be tested in this season. Hallelujah. So that's the first message. We didn't mention anyone's name. Any names that will be mentioned in subsequent videos is for the analysts to do. We mentioned no one. We are just telling the body of Christ to be vigilant. We are living in an extremely perilous season. Hallelujah. So that's the message that I've been sent to share with the saints. So the other message, I will share it midweek. Mm -hmm.